electric motors make up a large percentage of power system loads. Therefore, they have forced the motor control industry to continually evaluate the protection technology of this equipment. And that is where a thermal relay comes in as one of the best solutions for motor protection applications. So, in this video, I am going to explain the following. Definition of a thermal relay. Internal configuration and operation. Function of each button or knob. Motor protection circuit with thermal relay. Connection animation with physical elements. Current intensity adjustment according to the motor, among others. The thermal relay is an electromechanical device that provides protection functions for single-phase and three-phase motors against possible overload or overheating in the motor winding. This device by itself does not have cutting power, so it needs another device, which is the contactor, which can cut the current between its main contacts. Internally, a thermal relay consists of three main bimetals, each of which is constituted by the union of two types of metals with different types of thermal expansion coefficient. In addition, each bimetal has a wire winding which forms a small coil, which when current circulates, the bimetals deform and push the moving strip. But to better understand how it works, let's first look at the external parts that make up the thermal relay and what function they perform. At the top are the inputs of the main power contacts and at the bottom are their respective outputs. The thermal relay according to IEC standards has a normally closed contact with terminal markings 95 and 96. It also has a normally open contact 97 and 98 that in case of trip will close and can be used for a pilot light or an alarm that indicates an overload or overheating of the motor. These are auxiliary contacts. On the front we have the following. The intensity regulator, which allows us to adjust the current intensity at which it will work. For this model I have, the intensity can be adjusted from 7 amps to 10 amps. In this position, it has an arrow that indicates the intensity at which it is adjusted. The test button, which allows us to simulate an engine failure. In this model, we have it here below the dimmer switch. If this test button is pressed, then what it does is it opens the normally closed contact 9596 and closes the normally open contact 9798, and these will remain in that state. The reset button allows the reset of the thermal relay in the event of a trip due to overload or having simulated a fault with the test button. The reset button can be found in manual mode, which means that we must press this button to reset its contacts or automatic mode, which without the need to press anything, after a while, automatically resets its auxiliary contacts. The stop button allows the engine to be stopped, that is, it opens contact 9596, but does not close contact 9798 since this should only be closed to indicate a fault or alert about a problem in the engine. So, this is all we can find in a thermal relay. Here I show you another model, which has buttons that perform the same function as the previous model. Now we can better understand how the internal configuration of the thermal relay works. This works as follows. By circulating current through each coil, the bimetals constantly monitor the current absorbed by the motor. If the current that circulates is higher than the adjusted one, then the bimetals heat up and deform, allowing the mobile strip to move and push the auxiliary contacts, causing them to change position and state. These will return to their initial position automatically if the reset button is in automatic mode. Otherwise, you have to press the button manually to reset its contacts. The time it takes for the relay to generate the trip depends on the class to which it corresponds, which is shown in the table. As already said, a thermal relay has no braking power, that is, its main power contacts do not open. Those that change state are only their auxiliary contacts, which are used in the command and control circuit. The symbol that represents this element is the one shown on the screen, which has two parts, one for the power scheme or circuit and another for the command or control scheme. It is also possible to find it separately. Here I show you an example of a motor protection circuit where a thermal relay is used. Other elements such as thermomagnetic switches and contactors are also used, which were already explained in another video. I will leave the link in the description. I quickly explain what elements are part of these schemes. 
Q1 is a thermomagnetic switch responsible for protecting cables and other devices against possible overload or short circuit. F1 is the study element that is the thermal relay where, in the control diagram, its auxiliary contacts are connected and in the power diagram they are connected to its main contacts. This element serves the function of protecting the motor against overloads or overheating of the motor. S1 is a normally closed stop button. S2 is a normally open button for start. KM1 is the contactor coil. And contact 1314 is an auxiliary contact that depends on the state of the contactor coil. H1 is a pilot light or gear indicator light. H2 is a warning light or indicator light that activates when the thermal relay trips. Q2 is a three-pole thermomagnetic protection switch. And M1 is a three-phase motor. The circuit works as follows. When you press the start button, self-retention is immediately generated in the contactor, thus energizing the power lines and allowing the motor to run. If the motor is overloaded, then it will start to heat up. And that is where the thermal relay fulfills its function, de-energizing the contactor coil so that it can open its contacts and let the current circulate. Now, to get the engine running again, the following must be done. Find and repair the fault and reset the thermal relay by pressing reset if it is in manual mode. Here is a clarification which many confuse and it is in the automatic mode of the thermal relay. And when this relay trips and de-energizes the motor, it does not mean that after a while the motor will automatically turn back on by itself. No, that doesn't happen. What happens is that only the thermal relay is automatically reset but does not start the engine since, for this, the operator has to press the start button again. But the disadvantage of the thermal relay being in automatic mode is that the operator may not realize that the thermal relay has tripped and possibly pressed the start button. On the other hand, in manual mode, the operator must reset the thermal relay. And for this, he already takes into account that there was a failure in the engine and he has to repair it. For a better understanding, I am going to connect the physical elements guided by the diagrams previously explained. The connection of the power scheme is relatively easy since the three-phase power supply is carried through the thermomagnetic switch, then to the contactor and thermal relay, and finally to the motor. It's just that. The connections for the control scheme, yes, are somewhat complicated, but here I am going to guide you. But first, I will make a clarification. In this case, the contactor coil is powered with 220 volts alternating current. So you have to check that detail in the contactor model you are going to use. Furthermore, I have assumed that the voltage between phase and phase is 380 volts and between phase and neutral there is 220 volts which serves to feed the contactor coil. That said, we continue with the connections. I'm going to hide the lines of force for a moment to focus on the command part. From switch Q1, it will be connected to terminal 95 of the thermal relay. From its output, which is terminal 96, it is taken and connected to the stop button S1. Now to the start button S2. From the output of this button, it is carried and connected to terminal A1 of the contactor coil. And from terminal A2, it comes out and is brought back to the two-pole thermomagnetic switch. Note that the red cable indicates phase or line 1 and the white cable is for the neutral. We continue. We connect from between the buttons and take it to terminal 13 of the contactor. From terminal 14, we carry and connect to terminal A1. Now for the pilots, a cable is run from terminal 14 of the contactor to the running pilot. From its output, it is taken and connected to neutral. From Terminal 95, it is bridged with Terminal 97 of the thermal relay. Terminal 98, it is led and connected to the fault indicator light, and from its other end, it is led to neutral. Then there would be all the connections that must be made, according to the diagram shown. Finally, I am going to explain how to adjust the current intensity of the thermal relay according to the motor. All this has to do with the nominal current intensity at which the motor works, so the thermal relay must be adjusted to that value. Let's see with this example. If I have a motor with a nominal current intensity of 8 amps, which is printed on the plate of each motor, then the thermal relay must be set to that value, that is, also to 8 amps. 
Since, if the intensity setting is less than the nominal intensity of the motor, it will not be in danger of failing due to overload, but it will not have maximum performance either. On the other hand, if the current setting is greater than the motor's rated current, then the motor will work at its maximum output. But it will also be prone to being overloaded and the motor winding going bad. This is why the thermal relay must be adjusted to the same working current intensity of the motor. As for the contactor, it is recommended that it can withstand a current intensity of at least the maximum current intensity of the thermal relay. That is, for this case, as the thermal relay can be adjusted from 7 amps to 10 amps, then the contactor must support at least those 10 amps. If it supports more, it is better. Regarding the thermomagnetic switch, this is responsible for protecting the power cables. Therefore, its value has to be less than the current intensity that these cables can withstand. But it must also be taken into account that the cables have to withstand the maximum current intensity that can be set on the thermal relay. Here's another observation which some of you may be wondering and it is this. That both the thermal relay and the thermomagnetic switch protect against overload. And the difference between these is that the thermal relay is designed specifically for motors, while the thermomagnetic one is not, it is for a general case. Furthermore, even if the motor is changed, it can be operated with the same relay, just adjust its trip current intensity, and that's it. While the thermomagnetic one cannot, since these come with values established according to the standard, which can be 10, 16, 20, 25 amps, etc. Well friends, I don't want to make this video too long. I hope I have been able to clear all your doubts. Stay tuned as I will continue uploading videos on these topics of wired logic, PLC, and more. See you later.